The yield to a security is uh, for a stock, its price minus its previous price plus its income, here a dividend, uh, divided by its initial price. For a bond, it's much the same, uh, just changing the notation. It's the gain or loss on the bond prices and plus the income from the face value of the bond divided by its initial bond price. Properly, this is the yield, with the return being the gross principal included, but by convention, we refer to the yield or the net return. Now, here's a graph of some securities, A being in red and B in blue, and by statistic definition, the mean return, the R bar, is the summation of the returns for each security for each time period, and the differences we can call delta R, and the variance is the summation of the delta R squareds divided by the number of cases. What we're doing here is measuring the variation, or hence the term variance, and we do that by squaring the differences and adding them up and divided by the number of cases. And there's some notation that just shows the various ways we write that. Uh, the data we looked at, uh, well, 936, well, let's put a graph up there, and uh, minus 2, 0, and 1 were the sequences for A and B, respectively, and thus the mean for A is 6, and the mean for B is minus 1. So we take these means of 6 for A and minus 1 for B, and compute the differences. The 9 is 3 points above the mean of 6 for A, and likewise the 3 is 3 points below the mean for A, and 6 equals 6, so it's 0. And likewise for B, uh, minus 2 is 1 point below minus 1, and so on. And what we're going to do now is compute the covariance, the covariation. And again, that's just the cross product of the differences for population A and B for each time period T for all the cases. And as an aside, we'll note that the covariance when computed against itself, let's say A to A, well, that's the squaring of each one of those. So it turns out the covariance is just a special case of the variance. Now, by definition, Pearson thought of this. The correlation coefficient is the covariance divided by the standard deviations and that turns out to be very handy. So let's look at our data. The variance is the sum of those differences squared divided by the number of cases and that turns out to be 6 for A and B has uh, the minus 1 squared and the plus 1. Those are both 1. So the total is 2 thirds and the square root is taken from the variance, bringing it back to, if you will, its original units. And so we have the square root of 6 and the square root of 2 thirds, and there's our data difference there. And when we go to compute our covariance, that turns out to be minus 2. And the covariance is important, but even more important is something Pearson thought of, the correlation coefficient the covariance divided by the standard deviations. So the covariance here was minus 2. The standard deviation, square root of 6, square root of 2 thirds, divided into that minus 2 gives us minus 1. And that correlation coefficient is how good your prediction is, but is not the prediction itself. The prediction itself, the slope of a, an equation, if you were to try to predict these as a group, that's the variance of the other one divided in the covariance. So again, the correlation coefficient is minus 1, but predicting A to B, we divide by the variance of A, which is 6, gives us minus a third. Whereas if we're predicting B to A, we divide by its variance in the covariance. 2 thirds and a minus 2 gives us minus 3. So A to B, minus a third, but A from B, minus 3. And sure enough, notice, predicting A to B, we take minus a third and get the bottom row from the top. And from B to A, we take the bottom row and times minus a third and get the top row. And that's why our predictions and our accuracy, minus one, meaning perfectly correct all the time in the negative direction. Now the mean return we saw was its average. The differences from that are used to compute the variation, the variance, the sum of those differences added up divided by the number of cases. And the standard deviations taken from that, from its square root, I like to think of it as bringing it back to its original units. 
And the same thing is true for the correlation coefficient, where the covariance, the cross product of the various differences, added up divided by the number of cases. And we'll find out later the uh, case of uh, the variance being a special case of the covariance is when it's against itself. And the correlation coefficient, the uh, rho if you like, is the covariance divided by the respective standard deviations. It doesn't stop here. This is all used later to put together portfolio theory to come to even a greater understanding of investing with Dr. C. Thank <laughs> you.